Have you ever noticed how much we as human beings love stories? I mean, we can't get enough of them. Hi, I'm Randy Lovejoy, founder and CEO of RandyLovejoy.com, a virtual platform that is committed to helping you to create more good in your life, your relationships, and your community. A couple of years ago, I decided to run an experiment. And my hypothesis was this, that as I would go on my morning walk and go past other people walking in groups, that every single one of them would be telling stories. And my hypothesis was quickly verified. Some people were just venting frustration to their friends, but how would they do it? In story form. Other people were, were problem solving. They were sharing a problem with their friends to, to see if their friends could help them out. How did they share that problem? Again, in a story, just without a solution. And still others were telling about something really good that had happened to them. And how did they do it? They started before that good thing occurred and constructed a story that then came to that climax of that wonderful thing that they wanted to share with their friends. We absolutely love stories and we can't get enough of them. But here's a key question. Which type of story dominates your storytelling? That is, what kinds of stories do you tell yourself and do you tell others? Are they stories that are more toward the frustrated venting side? Are they stories that are more about problems yet to be solved? Are they stories about good things and solutions that have happened? If you're not really sure where your emphasis lies, you might want to ask some people that know you and love you. Yes, they will be able to tell you some stories that you have told them again and again and again, and they'll be able to help you to see kind of the tone of the story that you're telling of your own life. And you see, that tone of the stories that we tell most often has a huge impact on the amount of good that we create in our lives. And here's the good news. The good news is that we can be more intentional about how we tell stories, about how we tell the story of our life. And we're going to be talking about that today. I remember lying on the floor of my freshman dorm room, tears in my eyes, convinced that my whole life had fallen apart. Within the last year and a half or so, my parents had divorced, my grandfather had passed away, all of my friends were scattered from the American school in London where I went into high school into various universities and colleges. And I had just gotten off the phone with my girlfriend of three years. She was a junior back in London still. And she had ended our relationship out of the blue. There was nothing left of those, those things, that way of life that had given me a sense of identity and meaning and purpose. Now this is a pivotal moment story in my life. We all have a host of stories that we tell ourselves and others again and again from our lives, but there's usually one story that is a pivotal moment story. That is, it's the story that sets the tone for our lives, that impacts the way that we tell the other stories, that impacts the way that we approach life today. And a critical step that we need to take if we're going to create more good in our lives is to name that pivotal story and to write it down. Now, once you have that story named and written down, I want you to think of the moral of that story. In my case, the moral of the pivotal moment story in my life is, do not ever let this happen again. In other words, be vigilant because life is always delicate and could fall apart just like it did when you were a freshman in college. What is the moral that you have taken from your pivotal moment story? Once you have that pinned down, then write it down underneath your story, and then the fun really begins. Because we can start to test our pivotal moment story for accuracy. And that happens in two ways. One is to test the story itself. Did we get the story right? I have some friends that have checked on their pivotal moment stories with family and others that were there, and they're kind of like, no. No, that, that's actually not what happened. And they need to kind of revamp the story to get it accurate. But in my case, the story was accurate, but the moral that I took from the story was not real to life. And I know that now after having lived another couple of decades since that's occurred. Because my life since then has actually proven to me that life is much more adaptable and resilient and that I don't have to be 
anxious all the time about things falling apart, that there's a better way. So once you test your, your story and your moral for accuracy, I want you to give a percentage rating to it for how accurate it is, how true it is to life. And in my case, I'd give that story about 10%. It's about 10% true to life as I have experienced it. Once you have your percentage down, I want you to think about this. How can you make the story more accurate? That is, how would you reshape the story itself if that's where you've got some problems? Or how would you reshape the moral itself so that it's more accurate to life, it's more helpful in your life, and it will help you to create good in your life? So now we get to work on rewriting that pivotal moment story. I have rewritten the moral of my pivotal moment story so that it's no longer just a, a tale to make us worried and afraid, to make us ever vigilant because life could fall apart, to instead be a story about two ways that we can build our lives. And this is where I get some help from my spiritual journey, my spiritual readings, because Jesus tells a parable about two people. One person built their house on the sand, and when the storm came, that house fell apart because the foundation was not strong. Another person built their house on a rock, and when the storm came, the house held because of the strength of that foundation. And when I take that story of Jesus and then apply it to my life, what's going on in this pivotal moment story is, yes, my life was collapsing because the foundation was made of sand. But what happened because of that story was that I began to build my life on the rock. Because you see, as I was laying there on the floor, I was listening to music by a guy named John Michael Talbot. It was just an album I had in my collection, and he sings a lot about faith, a lot about Jesus, a lot about the Christian faith. And as I listened, I thought, okay, the only thing that's possibly still left in my life is this faith that my family has given me, and I have to make a decision here. Is that going to be my faith? Am I going to make this faith in Jesus the center of my life, or am I going to try to put the pieces back together some other way? Well, it was there that I decided I was going to make that faith in Christ that my family had given me my own faith. I would start my own journey with Jesus, because what I have found is that by making Jesus my guide on my spiritual journey, I found that rock foundation that can survive all sorts of storms and floods and all kinds of things. And I don't need to be afraid of it anymore. So what this does is it changes the, the whole moral, the whole tone of that pivotal moment story in my life from one that would, would engender anxiety and fear to one instead that, that promotes boldness and courageousness and trust and love. And so I would encourage you to go back to your own moral of your own pivotal moment story and engage your life experience and engage your spiritual journey to try to rewrite that story in a way that is going to create more good in your life. Not disconnected from reality because the last step is once you've rewritten it, then you need to test it for accuracy again. So I encourage you to rewrite your story and add that percentage accuracy. How much more accurate have you made your story in the way that you have rewritten it? So when I look at my story, with the moral being a tale of two ways to build your life, then the accuracy level goes from 10%, which is what it was before, up to what I would say about 75%, that it strikes me as being 75% true. And the reason I don't give it 100% isn't because I don't believe that, that that moral could eventually get me to that 100%. It's just that I'm still trying to trust and believe. I mean, I've still got that 10% of that other moral. Life is fragile and will fall apart unless you're vigilant. So I'm moving forward and I fully expect that percentage to go up. But honestly, right now, I'd say it's at about 75%. So where do you have your story? How accurate is it to life? How accurate is it? to your approach of life, your experience of life. 
Now, once you have that percentage, you should be feeling lighter. And I don't mean that in a flippant way. You should feel more energized. You should be more excited because that's simply how we work. It's that simple. When we change the tone of the stories that we're telling, we change the way that we approach our lives. And then suddenly we have an opportunity to create more good in our lives, our relationships, and our communities than we have before. With that said, one caveat. This stuff isn't easy. It takes some work. And it's also something that you don't have to do on your own. There are other people that can help you. RandyLovejoy.com, for example, is built to support you in creating more good in your life. And this is a key part of that. The inspiration that we regularly put up on our social media channels is the stuff that you can use to begin to reshape your life. I'd also encourage you to check out our website and sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already because we've got other videos that are coming out on a weekly basis to help people move forward in their spiritual journey. And finally, if you're really stuck and you feel like we just need to have a one-on-one, -on -one, then you can sign up for that on the webpage. You can sign up for a 15-minute get-together, and I would love to meet you, to hear about your key stories, and to work with you to try to help rewrite those stories in a way that will be more fruitful for you and for your loved ones. So enjoy the process of taking more ownership of the stories that lead your life. We'll talk to you again soon.